In June 1894, the Corporation of Liverpool had extensive renovations carried out on the church grounds of St Paul's. It was during the process of renovation that one of the workmen made a chilling discovery. As he was digging the trench, he came upon an empty coffin, which after some investigation turned out to be that of Reverend Barlow, one of the church's former ministers who had been buried there for several decades. It was immediately apparent that the late reverend's body had fallen prey to body snatchers almost 70 years earlier, a time when the city was blighted by grave robbers who were operating on an industrial scale. But there was one case in particular that would send shockwaves through society and reveal the dark underbelly of the medical industry. In the twilight hours of an October evening in the year 1826, a cart is lurching its way through the gathering gloom of the George's Dock Passage. Upon the cart are three large barrels, which are prominently labelled bitter salts. The eyes of the driver seek among the flickering dockside lamps the ship that bears the name Latona, for it is this vessel that the driver must deliver the casks. In his pocket he carries a note addressed to the Caron Company, and which reads as follows. Please ship on board the Latona three casks of bitter salts from Mr. Brown, Agent Liverpool, to Mr. G. H. Ironson, Edinburgh, signed J. Brown. It's not long before the Carter has discovered the Latona, one of the ships trading between Liverpool and Leith. After making the drop, the Carter heads homeward bound, completely unaware that the cargo he just delivered was about to become a macabre national scandal. It had been a long and tiring day for the crew of the Latona, who hastily stowed away the battles before abandoning the ship, beckoned by the warm hospitality of the dockside alehouses. However, when they returned to the ship the following morning, the crew were met by a foul and putrid smell emanating from the battles. It wasn't unusual for the ship's cargo deck to have repulsive smells, but this stench was so noxious that it required the attention of the shipmaster, who upon experiencing the foul odour for himself, ordered one of the bungs be removed. The shipmaster, upon reaching his hand inside the barrel, is horrified to encounter not the chemical substance he anticipated, but the soft telltale contours of a human body. And so began one of Liverpool's most gruesome investigations. The barrels were promptly removed from the ship and taken to the old city's dead house in Chapel Street, and when fully opened proved to contain no less than 11 human bodies, packed in salt, bitter salts indeed. The police investigation was undertaken by Officer Robert Bowie, and, in a remarkably short space of time, he had managed to track down the carter who had made the delivery. His name was George Leach, who had, he said, been with his brother's cart at the dry dock on the previous Monday afternoon, when he was approached by a tall, stout man. This stranger, who had a thick Scottish accent, offered him two shillings if he would deliver the three barrels to the Latona. Leach agreed and was told to take his car to a house in Hope Street. There he was met by two men who brought the barrels up from a cellar and gave him a hand lifting them onto his cart. He then transported the barrels to the ship, which he understood was bound for Leith, and that, he said, was as much as he knew of the matter. Officer Bowie went straight on to the house in Hope Street, which he found occupied by Reverend James McGowan, who ran a small private school there. McGowan said he had let his cellar out to a Mr. Henderson, a native of Greenock, who had told him that he was a cooper by trade and was engaged in the export of fish oil. 
Officer Bowie asked for the key to the cellar, but McGowan said it was not in his possession. Despite protests from the Reverend, Officer Bowie set about breaking down the door. It burst open to reveal a scene of horror. Scattered about the room were the corpses of 22 men, women and children. From his examination of the remains, police surgeon Thomas William Davis concluded that in every case, death had occurred from natural causes. And upon the toe of one young woman, he found a significant fragment of thread. This had led him to believe that the bodies had been disinterred, probably from the parish cemetery, which was situated about a quarter mile away from Hope Street for it was common practice in those days to keep the feet of the deceased together by tying the toes. From this small clue, together with other pieces of evidence found within the cellar, he had no hesitation in saying that the Hope Street basement had been operating as a body snatcher's warehouse. But what was fueling such a large-scale demand for human corpses? The 19th century ushered in a newfound medical interest in detailed anatomy, thanks to an increase in the importance of surgery. In order to study anatomy, human cadavers were needed. The law of the time stipulated that only the corpses of executed murderers could be used for dissection. But the sudden rise of medical science, coinciding with the reduction in the number of executions, had caused demand to outstrip supply and thus the practice of grave robbing was born. Those who could afford a decent burial often did everything possible to protect their loved ones from the clutches of the resurrection men, even going as far as employing a watchman to keep guard. Iron cages with heavy concrete lids known as mort guards were often used to prevent coffins from being dug up. Digging a coffin up at six feet under in the dead of night was no simple task. To make life easier, a small hole was dug, the coffin lid broken, and the corpse pulled straight through the gap, leaving most of the coffin intact. Despite the widespread search which ensued for the body snatchers, Henderson, the main character in the grim drama, was never brought to justice. However, two other men were arrested. One by the name of Gillespie was subsequently discharged, but the other, 25-year-old James Donaldson, later stood trial on the charge of having conspired to disinter dead bodies. The trial aroused considerable horror and indignation from the general public. Donaldson was found guilty and sentenced to 12 months in the Kirkdale House of Correction and ordered to pay a fine of £50. On November 9, 1826, two more men were taken into custody. John Ross and Peter McGregor. The circumstances surrounding these arrests are curious. On Saturday, November 4th, a man brought a large box into the White Horse in Dale Street. Shortly after his departure, the coach office bookkeeper noticed a very offensive smell coming from the box. Probably recollecting the recent discoveries at Hope Street, he took it upon himself to open the box and inside he found the body of a woman. A day or two later, a man brought a similar box into the Golden Lion Inn, also in Dale Street, which was addressed for forwarding to Edinburgh. The innkeeper managed to detain the man until the police arrived. The box was subsequently forced open, and yet another human body was disclosed. Both Ross and McGregor were committed for trial, charged with having unlawfully opened graves and carrying away dead bodies. They were sentenced to 12 months imprisonment and each had to pay a fine of £21 to the king. And so ended the era of the Liverpool body snatchers and although occasional premature resurrections were recorded as having taken place in Liverpool, the Hope Street affair stands unique in the annals of the city as the only instance of an organised network of body snatchers for the export of corpses. The house itself has long since vanished, and the whole of Hope Street changed beyond recognition since those faraway days. 
I hope you enjoyed today's video. A lot of hard work and time went into making it, so I'd really appreciate it if you could show your support by hitting the like button. And please do leave a comment as it really inspires me to make more. Until next time, Maximus out.